there hoppers and welcome to part 3 of this discussion trilogy where we are analysing and speculating about the new Pokemon Sword and Shield starting trio. Now back in part 1 we discussed the grass type Pokemon Grookey and then in part 2 we discussed the fire type Pokemon Score Bunny. So if you missed out on any of these videos and you want to watch them before this one then don't worry there'll be a link for them in the video's description down at the bottom so feel free to check them out. And for those of you who are up to date and sticking around, just remember as always, if a segment doesn't interest you, then you too can look down in the video's description where you will see a list of navigation links covering all of the main points. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get straight back into the swing of things, concluding now with the third and final pocket monster in this new trio. The water type Pokemon Sobble. So, yet again, the current deck states a somewhat timid water lizard Pokemon that shoots out attacks as it hides itself in the water. And all I can say is timid is an understatement. This thing looks freaking terrified. I mean, look at that face. I mean, I know it's supposed to look a little unnerved, but it doesn't have to look like it's seen a bloody ghost. I mean, honestly, they could at least give the poor thing black pupils. It looks possessed. Anyway, despite looking like an extra from The Exorcist, I must admit I actually quite like the design. It looks quite cute and it's nice to see a water type lizard Pokemon, as we have yet to have that rendition. And it's actually one I've been waiting for for quite some time. Also, this Pokemon seems to have the ability to camouflage, which is a pretty cool feature. And in regards of the anime, it certainly has a lot of potential, if used correctly. That being said, it's not the first time we've seen this feature, as Kecleon from Generation 3 also had this ability. So although it's definitely a cool feature, it's not an original one. And on the subject of originality, as always the question must be asked. Overall, is this new pocket monster original? Does Sobble present something new, like Score Bunny, or does it linger just a little too long in the uncanny valley, like Grookey? <coughs> well, when it comes to similarities to other Pokemon, it definitely seems to share at least some resemblances. In fact, when I first laid eyes on this design, I was instantly reminded of Froakie. But upon closer inspection, you can see that they don't really look anything alike. Hell, maybe it was just the posture that got me making the comparison. But as I explained back in part 2, a posture cannot be accredited to its overall design because it's just a posture. You know, it's subject to change based on circumstances. Therefore, if this is considered a resemblance, then it's definitely one that I am more than willing to overlook. One that I can't overlook, however, is that of a resemblance to Fioni and Manaphy, as all share not only a similar head design, but also surrounding eye pattern as well. And when it comes to Sobble's head fin, well, I can't help but think of Mudkip. And yes, granted it is a completely different style, as you can see, the two look nothing alike. However, I still can't help but make that connection, because it is still a similarity. So, it would seem that there are indeed some similarities to other Pokemon. Nothing too particular, certainly nothing copied to the extent of Grookey, shall we say, but the resemblances are definitely there. And that creates a problem. And the biggest problem I have with this Pokemon is that it is yet another Lizard Starter. And yes, I know back in part one I did defend the overusage of Lizard Pokemon, you know, due to there being so many varieties for inspiration. And of course I still stand by this statement. However, my problem is that much like Grookey, I can't help but wonder why Sobble is even a starter Pokemon in the first place. You know, what put this Pokemon above all others, qualifying it as a starter, as one of the main mascots for a new generation? Because just by being a lizard alone, it is instantly unoriginal, especially in regards to starter Pokemon. As I said, it is yet another lizard starter. We've already had two before it. Now, the decision to use Score Bunny, I can understand entirely, because we have never had a rabbit starter before. 
So it just makes sense to do this. But much like with Grookey, when it comes to Sobble, I can't help but think that there must surely be more original options for a starter Pokemon. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I like it. I think it's a pretty cool design. It's just, I can remember another cool looking lizard Pokemon that has arguably a better design. And yet, was that used as one of the starters in its respected generation? No. Instead, we were given something different. Something fresh. And instead, the lizard just joined the ever-expanding decks. So we still got the cool design in the game, it just simply wasn't used as a mascot. You know, instead, we were given something we hadn't had before. And that is my problem with Sobble. Because we have had a lizard starter before. All this being said, I really do like the design. You know, there isn't a large amount of issues I actually have with it. From a design standpoint, that is. And we haven't had a water lizard Pokemon before. So there is at least a little touch of originality. And, as I said earlier in the video, it is a typing that I've actually been waiting for for quite some time. I just didn't expect to see it as one of our new starters. Also, in regards to this typing, I was always hoping for a portrayal of one of my favourite reptiles, the Marine Iguana, a lizard that would have been a perfect match for this water typing. Overall then, I feel Sobble has a decent design. It's nothing special, but I actually quite like it. And although there are already plenty of lizard Pokemon out there, I still can't help but get enjoyment when a new addition is added. Because, as I explained before, there seems to be a lot more unique options when it comes to these fascinating reptiles. Also, speaking of fascinating, as we have already discussed, Sobble boasts the camouflage ability. And, although it's not an original concept, Sobble does at least appear capable of complete transparency, unlike its Hoenn counterpart it would seem, who has one major giveaway when completing the same magic trick. Either way, I think Sobble is a pretty cool looking pocket monster. It's cute and it's a welcome addition to the Pokemon family. And I certainly look forward to seeing just where its next evolutions take it. Who knows, maybe it will earn its starter status. But I guess only time will tell. And speaking of time, what would be really cool is if this Pokemon gets less timid with every evolution. You know, like it starts off as this little timid lizard scared of its own shadow, and then over time it becomes this strong-minded, overconfident titan. Evolution of both the body and the mind. Now that's something I think would be pretty cool. So yes, there is definitely a lot of potential when it comes to this new little pocket monster, especially in regards to its camouflage ability. But, is it fresh? Well, bearing in mind everything we've just discussed, I would have to say no. I'm sorry, but as much as I like it, it just doesn't feel fresh to me. I think where the issue lies is that it hasn't been that long since we got Froakie. And being a blue frog, and Sobble being more of a blue amphibious newt than an actual lizard, it just looks too familiar to me. As I said, when I first looked at this Pokemon, I was instantly reminded of Froakie. It was only when I made the side-by-side -side comparison that I saw the lack of resemblance. And although it does clearly have a different design, it still triggers off this false sense of familiarity. And when this is paired with the similarities to other Pokemon, and the fact that it is yet another lizard starter, I have to conclude that it is just not a fresh design. So again, it might be a new design, but unfortunately, it just doesn't feel like a fresh one. Anyway, on the subject of fresh, it's time to discuss the possible colour alternatives that we might see for Sobble's shiny form. And looking back at the past shinies, it would seem that the water starters have been just as mistreated as the grass starters. Because just as most of the grass starters went from green to green, 
when it comes to the water starters, practically all of them go from blue to blue, with the exception of only one. Just one! Mudkip is the only water starter with a significant change, going from the common blue to a unique purple colouring. And yes, I know there are technically other differences on some of the other Pokemon, such as Squirtle Shell, for example, changing from brown to green. And uh, I wonder why they did that. But still, the bulk of the colour design hasn't changed much at all. And that is the point I'm trying to make. So, first we get 50 shitty shades of green, and now we get the smelly sequel. 50 shitty shades darker blue. Seriously, I mean, just look at Poplio. The last water starter, it went from dark blue to a slightly darker shitty shade of blue. There's almost no change at all. I'm not even exaggerating, look at it. The only thing that is even distinguishably different is the neck collar. And even then it goes from light blue to white shite. It's just laziness. I mean, even the starter before it, Froki also hardly made a change. You know, it doesn't even look like a shiny variant. It just looks ill. You know, and it's so frustrating because there is just no excuse for it. Like I said before, I'd be a lot more forgiving if this was just another random Pokemon on the decks. But it's not. It's the bloody water mascot of its generation. You know, at least pretend to put some effort into it. I mean, just look at this for example. Here we have Poplio's standard form next to its so-called shiny form. And you can really see just how pointless it is. Well, what if the shiny instead looked like this? Now instantly, this is not only a huge improvement, but in regards to shiny starters, it is completely unique. And yet all I have changed from the current shiny is the body colour. Everything else is exactly the same, such as the same white collar and the pink nose. But look how much better this looks. The white now complements the colour scheme. And this literally took me seconds to come up with. My inspiration for the colour design actually came to me whilst I was eating a red velvet cookie. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, if I can improve a shiny design within seconds of trying whilst wolfing down a packet of cookies in the process, then why can't they? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they suffer from a little thing I like to call bone idol laziness. So, with all that in mind, when it comes to Sobble's shiny form, the chances are it's just going to look something like this. <laughs> I'm not joking, seriously. They did the same with Froki and Poplio, and they're the last two water starters we had. So, <laughs> why expect anything different? And let's face it, if it is different, the only thing they will probably significantly change is the colour of its head fin. And even then, they'll probably just make it blue. Or, if they want to be a little bit more creative, they might recycle their only creative design and make it purple, like Mudkip. But still, if there's any real hope for a bit of change, then they really need to steer clear of the blue colouring altogether. Well, at least for the main body colour anyway. You know, if they're having a hard time letting go, then just incorporate the blue somewhere else in the design. Personally, I would go with this approach. So as you can see, I've made it this muddy brown colour, which I think complements the design pretty well actually. But as you can see, I've still incorporated those blue colours. It's just not as prominent, it's not overpowering. And like I said, I, I think it really does suit the design. You know, it would also be nice to bring in some black pupils as well, so it no longer looks like it's in dire need of a priest. But still, that's a change that I definitely don't see happening. Another design that I think would work really well is this one. Here I think the striking reds combined with the light greens complement each other perfectly, and in doing so, create yet another noticeably different variant. And also, with Sobble being such a timid Pokemon by nature, I really like the idea that these striking colours make it really easy to spot, which would explain why it's always trying to hide. I can actually see it in the anime, trying to hide in the water, and everyone just being able to see the bold red from under the rippling waves. It would then eventually have to go and learn its camouflage ability in order to hide itself successfully. You know, I think something like that would be really interesting to see. Like I said, there is a lot of potential when it comes to the anime. 
Anyway, back to the possible shiny variants, and another possible variant could be this black and grey design, as not only does it complement the design really well, but it also looks like one of those flesh flies. And we all know who love flies, don't we? But, joking aside, and of course sticking with its actual eye design, I do actually think this is a pretty decent variant. You know, it looks quite sleek, and again, it's a unique colouring, so why not? However, despite all these potential variants, deep down we all know the route they're going to take. The lazy one. Because if their most recent track record teaches us anything, it's don't expect them to be creative when designing these shiny palettes. So, therefore, in conclusion to this shiny discussion, and despite all the other potential variants we also discussed, this right here is the design that I would personally choose for Sobble's shiny form. However, that being said, this one right here is the one that I predict will be its official shiny form. So, just to confirm, this is the one I'm hoping for, and this is the one we are more than likely going to end up with. But still, never mind, eh? So, there we have it. It's been a long road, but now all three of the new starters have travelled down it. And with the new games just hours away, all what's left to do now is reveal the Pokemon that I will choose to join me on this new adventure. Drumroll, please! Well, bearing in mind everything we've discussed over the last three videos, and also the fact that I've been waiting so long for a Pokemon such as this, I think it's safe to say, without a doubt in my mind whatsoever, that the... Yes, yes, alright, I'm getting on with it. Okay, so, the Pokemon that I'll be choosing will be... Oh, for fuck's sake, look, Jigglypuff, I ain't got time to hear you sing, okay? Just fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, but, you know, I'm in the middle of something here. I listen to your song tonight, you know, when I want to go to bed, alright? Jesus H. Christ. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, the Pokemon that I'll be choosing will be none other than Scott. What the hell is this? No! Hell no! Did you, did, you, did you watch the damn videos? No! That's like the bottom of my list! So, the Pokemon that I'll be choosing will be none other than Scott. Oh no, for God's sake, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say... Oh. Let's try that again, shall we? For the third and hopefully final time, the Pokemon that I'll be choosing will be none other than Squawk. Oh, well, Hoppers, that just about does it for this Pokemon Starter Trilogy. Thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to see more Pokemon-themed content in the future then please give us a like, and if you haven't already, why not consider subscribing to the channel? That way you're not missing out on any of the new content. And with the games now mere hours away, it won't be long before there are new Pokemon to discuss and new mysteries to uncover. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have. Take care, Hoppers, and I'll see you next time.